Okay. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. Recording in progress. We thank you give us this wonderful Thursday night. It was such a blessing we have Dr. Sue with us again. She will give us uh, about another the mystery about the dinosaur. You just bless all the kids, bless our teacher, everyone. Lord, and we pray to you. You just gave us a listening ear and a teachable heart. Then open our eyes to see your beautiful Everybody listen. Okay, so hold all your questions. After the lesson, we open our chat, then you can give your uh, yeah. So more questions, you can do the same thing, write it in, and then I can read it easier, okay? Did dinosaurs go to heaven? The Bible didn't say anything about dinosaurs going to heaven, but we do know that there was living things in heaven, but uh, the Bible didn't call them dinosaurs, so we don't know, okay? However, we do know that People are different from animals. People have the spirit that you can communicate with God. But animals do not have a spirit. They have a soul. So they can feel, they can love, they can, they can, uh, they have instincts, they have intelligence. But they don't have the part that worship God. Only people are making the image of God. Okay? That's what we know. Did they... Did they die because God thought the dinosaurs might kill humans? We don't know. The Bible didn't say. But we don't. We do know. Not only dinosaurs die off. A lot of things die off. Okay, and in fact, we do know one reason. Because ever since Adam and Eve did not want to listen to God, then they don't know how to take care of everything. The environment was going downhill. Everything was going bad. So a lot of things go extinct, okay? So even today, we still you go to the zoo and you can see endangered species everywhere, right? So things are dying off. And this is too bad because we are the manager. Mm -hmm. Human beings are the manager. If we don't listen to the creator, then things are not going to work, okay? What was the first dinosaur di discovered? That I had to look up, okay? So the Megalosaurus is believed to be the first dinosaur ever described scientifically, okay? It was by the British, okay? So in 1819, so they have some pictures like that. But see, it's believed, okay? So we don't know. How about the Chinese? Maybe they discover Dinosaur, but they called it dragons a long time before 1819, right? And how about something that you study? Did Columbus discover North America? Well, when Columbus came to North America, were there people there? Yeah, there were lots and lots of people. So did Columbus discover North America? Of course not, you see? But in your books, they told you that Columbus is America because it was from the eyes of the Europeans, not from the eyes from the Navajo, uh, Suho, or, um, or whatever, first people yeah. that are already in North America, you see. So a lot of things we may read, but you have to think about it. Well, when Columbus came to North America, there were lots and lots of people there. So somebody else discovered before Columbus, right? So in your books, they tell you that this uh, Columbus discovered, actually he did not. It was because people from Europe, they said the first one from Europe to go to North America was Columbus, see? So they didn't think of all those people that were here. So the statement says, it is believed to be the first dinosaur, okay? So we don't know whether it's fact or not. If dinosaurs were alive today, would they attack human probably? Because ever since the flood, Noah's me, flood, God says, God says animals are going to be afraid of human beings, right? No. So, no. so the big, uh, big no, tests like tigers no. and lions and so on, 
they are afraid of human beings now. So if you meet up with a tiger or a lion, they will think that you're going to hurt them. So they would attack us, right? Okay. Are dinosaurs carnivores or herbivores? In the beginning, in the Garden of Eve, uh, in the Garden of Eden, everything ate plants. So everything was herbivore. But after human beings disobey God, then things became worse and worse. So some of those things are eating each other. Okay. How did the people survive a meteor and the volcano? And how did people not die? Okay. Now this question actually presumes something. Presume dinosaur die because of meteor or because of volcano, right? But we don't know. Now, later on, next time, I'll talk about the many theories of the extinction of dinosaur. So, so first of all, we don't know if dinosaurs are extinct. Secondly, we don't know how they went extinct if they were, okay? But we don't know something. There were some dinosaurs that survived because they were in Noah's Ark. They were in Noah's Ark. And the people that were in Noah's Ark, the eight people there, they survived all the meteor and survived all the volcano, survived the whole flood thing that we know. Okay? So that's what I have for you right now. Uh, but those are other people's questions. Okay. So you can write more questions for me if you want. Okay? And then we can go on with what we plan uh, too fast. Okay, so today we continue with what we talk about, right? In the Chinese culture, there were many things, art things that were carved out. Actually, they look very much like our dinosaurs. So maybe in those days, about 4,000 years ago, the Chinese actually has seen something like that. Okay, according to the Bible, yes, very possible that they have seen dinosaurs before, okay? So another one, remember that? So when did dinosaurs live? The same time as human beings, right? So what is the problem that we always hear that the age of dinosaur, there's nobody there? Because you, you remember the question we asked, was it a fact? Was it opinion? Of course there's opinion, right? Uh -huh. So According to evolution, if dinosaurs die out 65 million years ago, and according to evolution, there's nobody there, no people there. So how would they know if nobody was there? It's not history, okay? But according to the Bible, and according to what we just seen, the artifacts, dinosaurs live in the same time as human beings. Then what is the problem then? The problem is how do you think things? How old are these things? How old are these things? I uh, bought one of these things not long ago. Where did I put it? Okay. I bought a um, trailer bike and uh, they told me that it was five million years ago. I bought a, a, uh, a, uh, what do you call that? Uh, and muscle, right? You see that? Just like what do you eat, right? And the paper says it's 150 million years old. So you're going to ask, how do you know, right? How do you know? So today we are going to discuss, discuss this most important, but you may find it boring. I'll try to make it not boring, okay? It's the most important topic. How do we know how old these fossils are? Okay. So last time you remember, uh, for example, Meizi, uh, uh, Meizi uh, is nine year old, right? Uh -huh. okay, how did she know she was nine year old? Because we see her hair? Because we see how tall she is? No, because her mom or dad told her, right? So you see, to know how old you are, there's only one way, history. You need somebody has seen it ever since you were born. And then they look at the, the calendar and count the days, okay? But 
how about dinosaur fossils and all these different kinds of fossils? How would you know how old uh, they are? <laughs> right, uh, I found it, it just dropped, okay? So this is what I was looking for. You see that trinobite, right? Trinobite, uh -huh. okay. And what does it say in this, on this paper? 550 million years old. 550 million years old. Then you're gonna ask, how do you know, right? Uh -huh. They sold it, I asked them. And uh, they said, oh yeah, we know it. I said, what method did you use? They said carbon-14, so we're going to talk about carbon-14, okay? I hope we get to there and see if their reasoning is right or not, okay? Because you have a brain, you can think. So how old are the fossils then? How old are these things then? It's alive, right? It's the same as a fossil. Then how old is this fossil? So I'm going to ask you a question. I am here. And I came here, you don't know where. But when you come in, I'm reading a book, a big book, okay? When you come in, I'm reading page 1000. And after you come in, you time me. I read one page every minute. Every minute, I read one page. How many minutes have I been here? Think about that and see if you got it right, okay? So that's essentially the, the question we ask. So you, you, you come in and see, we, I'm reading a big book and you see that I'm reading page 1000. And then you time me, I'm reading one page every minute and you want to know how many minutes I'm here, okay? So think about it and see if you got it right, okay? So this is called radiometric data. Wow, what a big name, but don't worry. It's just like reading a book. It's actually very simple. So radiometric dating or so-called absolute dating. How does it work then? How does it work? Ah, there's something A. We call it mother animal. And then it changes into B. We call it daughter animal. And then we measure how much mother and how much daughter and how fast it changed. And it's like, ah, I know how long you've been here. Okay. So you have the mother element that changes slowly or fast into the daughter element. Now you end up with this rock with a combination of mother and daughter element, right? And you want to see how long this process has been going on, okay? So you have this change from the mother element to daughter element. So I'll give you an example, There's too many words, so like separate out, okay? Okay, here is a rock. We know its age is 50 years. Using the radiometric dating, we got 1.35 million years. You said wrong. I know it's 50 years. You gave me a wrong answer, right? Ha <laughs> ha. So it's a wrong answer. Now here is the piece that we don't know how old it is. Using the same method, it gives you 2.75 million years. Do you think that's right? See, this one that we know is 50 years. Use this method. Um, no sense. It give you a very wrong answer. But this piece of rock, we don't know how old it is. We use the same method and they give 2.7 billion years. Do you think that is right? Of course not, right? That's also wrong, right? So here are some examples. The real age of the rock is 41 years from uh, from uh, uh, 1980, okay, 41 years. But using radiometric data, it gives you 2.8 million years. Is that right or wrong? Wrong, okay. Of course, you understand, right? Uh -huh. So we're gonna go for some example. Real age is 46 years. Using radiometric method, it gives you 3.5 million years. Is this year right? 
It's only 46 years. How come you, you measure 3.5 million years? So the method is not good. So let's go to my question. When you come in, I'm reading page 1000. When you come in, I'm reading one page every minute. So how many minutes have I been here? Anybody wants to answer? <laughs> okay, Abby. 1,000. She says 1,000. Anybody that disagree? Tony? I disagree. Why? I disagree because it hasn't even been 1,000 minutes yet. How do you know you haven't been 1,000 minutes? Because every single minute is 59 seconds. Yes, it's 60 seconds. And how do you know that I haven't been here 1,000 minutes? How many pages is... How many pages is it? The whole oh, thing? One page, you, then it's a thousand minutes, duh. So you're, you're guessing in the right range. Okay, go on. Anybody told me? You said I may not be here 1,000 minutes, why? Uh, do you mean that, um, uh, so now you're on page 1,000 in I this agree. book? So, and one page equals one minute. Yeah, but we just said somebody agrees at 1,000 minutes, but somebody said I disagree. So I'm asking those that disagree to give me the reason that you disagree. I don't disagree, though. I just want to say something. John? Sean, you raise your hand, right? Maybe it's 500 minutes. Why? Because when you flip a page, it means you read two pages already. Well, you see, you have to ask something, okay? What page did I start with? Zero? Did I? Don't know, what right? You don't know. You yeah, started you on page one. Ah, uh, how fast did I read before you come in? I agree, page one. You did know, right? And there's uh, other factors, okay? So if I told you that, what if I start with page 999? So how long have I been here? One minute. But, uh -huh. And maybe if I read faster, or maybe I skip pages, there are pages I didn't want to read. So the speed may not be the same as one page every minute. And how about if there's a way in the bro my uh, pages in here and there? So you see the answer is, I don't know. Because you have to know what page I stop. You have to know if I read at the same speed all the time. You have also to know there's nothing else that influence my pages, you see? So these three very important factors that we don't know, okay? So if we don't know, then, well, then you'll say, how can I tell, okay? So I gave you, I don't know if I talked to you this before, okay? I give you this example, okay? Now I have a cut here and I have three beats, three beats. Okay, in my head. And we're gonna count together. One, two, three. How many beats are in the cup? How many? How many beats are in the cup? More three. Than more than three. That's a lot pour of it out and see. What do you drop? I pour it out and then you have one, two. Three, four, five. How come you have five? But well, we count the only, only three, right? 
But when you put that, because when you dropped it in, it made noise, so it's supposed to be more than three. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. But we pour it out and we count it, and there are five. You see, that's the number three. Do I know if there's other factors? What happened was you added more before. I have two in the cup to start with, okay? But you don't see it, okay? Then we count the three. So if you don't know how much I start with, then you can count it, but you'll be wrong, okay? Now we'll count it again, okay? This time I'll show you that I have nothing in the cup, okay? Nothing in the cup, okay? So I have five beads and we are going to count it together. One, two, three, four, five. How many do I have in the cup? Five. But I only have one. Why? Because you took some out. Because there is a hole. Because there is a hole. See that? So if there's something we don't know, you can count it very well. But it will be wrong because we don't know if there's a hose, things will leak out or not. So we can count very accurately. One, two, three, four, five. And you may have only one left because there is a hole there, right? On the other hand, if you didn't know how, how much I have to start with, and we can count very carefully, and we can count. But because I have three to start with, so we end up with five. You see that? Uh -huh. So you see, there's no way to know, unless you know everything, see? No way to know how long it is, unless you know everything, okay? So for you older people, you probably figure it out, okay? So these are the three assumptions. My starting page, if I start with page 999, I only need one minute to get to 1,000, right? My reading speed, if before you came in, I skip pages, I didn't read, and then it doesn't have to take 1,000 minutes. And number three, other factors. Maybe there are wind blowing up this way and that way, right? So we don't know. So you see, this is radiometric dating. It doesn't work. That's why we have all those wrong answers. Remember, 41 years using radiometric dating give you 2.8 million, right? 46 years using radiometric dating, 3.5 million. Very, very wrong, right? So you understand now, okay? So for example, when a volcanic eruption, the lava that flows out and they cool down and solidify. So we call it year zero, okay, because solidify. So things inside won't move around anymore, okay? So let's go to Hawaii. The volcano Hualalei, in history, it exploded 200 years ago. By using radiometric dating, it gives you 160 million to 3 billion years. 200 years, but this method is strange, right? Let's go to another mountain, Kilauea. In history, it's 200 years. Using radiometric data, it gives you 22 million years. Of course, very wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So people wanted to count how old the earth was. And I just pick a few. Using meteor, using Earth magnetic field, you get a maximum of 10,000 years. Using meteor dust accumulated, you get zero year. Using molten crust that solidified, you get 500 million years. Using population starting with two people, you only need 5,000 years to get to so many people. Using ancient wood, and calculate carbon 14, you only need 4,000 years. Using the accumulation of delta, you know, when the mud 
will, will uh, carry to the mouth of the river. It only takes 5,000 years. Using moon dust, moon will be 200,000 years. So you see all these different as how old is the earth? Who knows, right? We're getting all strange answers. That's why radiometric dating sounds good, but it's useless. But today, in media, in everywhere, we are seeing report with media and uh, with uh, radiometric dating. So when you read something, you ask, is this real? Is that real? Okay. So somebody collected 60 some experiments counting the age of the earth based on the three assumptions, zero daughter element in the beginning. A to B has a constant rate and is a closed system, no other factor come in or go out. How old is the earth? Some experiments says zero year, some says some hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands or hundred thousand or a million year or, or tens of million years or hundred million years. How old is the earth? What if I ask uh, Wang Jiale and Wang Jia'an, how old are you? Well, there's a, I am two year old or maybe 200 years or maybe 2000 years. That would be meaningless, right? Uh, so you see, there's only one way to know. Age is history. You need dependable witness that have seen it happen and counted it at the time, right? Otherwise, we're meaning this, right? Mm -hmm. Now we go to um, the reason. Uncle evolution, how do they count day? You say everything is the same thing. Uniformitarianism, okay? Always the same. The same process, things happen the same way. Same speed, things happen at the same rate. So their phrase is, the present is the key to the past. According to the Bible, no, it's different. Everything may happen real fast, catastrophe. Sudden changes, it will affect our earth, the greatest. For example, in chapter three in Genesis, it says death started coming in. Chapter seven, it says it's a global flood. The whole earth is changed. Then chapter 10, it says the earth was divided. Wow, big things happen. It may not happen now, but it may have happened previously, but we don't have history. And I we need don't know. it. Oh my God, <laughs> Then we will know, right? Okay, so let's oh, go to Mount no. Sinai. So when you're studying this issue of creation evolution, you can go a lot of places. Okay, so my husband, our youngest son, we went to see this mountain. Okay, this mountain has a big hole. It used to be like this. Now, if you go there and measure, how long does it take to carve a big hole? You probably take minutes of years at today's rate, right? But did it happen that way? Let's look at history. It started out a beautiful volcano, right? What happened? In 1980, May 18, in the morning, 8.32 in the morning, Sunday. This is what happened. And in a few seconds, 10 seconds after that, wow, it's only blown a big hole. And in 14 seconds, this hole is even bigger, you see? It doesn't take slow process. It takes real fast things to happen. So there's a museum in Mount St. Helen. You can still go there. It tells you instant landscapes, the impact of the 1980 eruption. Instant, instant. Everything will change instantly. I saw it with my own eye, right? So now we go back and you understand. Okay. Hula Lei in Hawaii. It erupted in 1800, so it's only 200 years. But using radiometric dating, it gives you it gives you 1.4 million years. Mount Lassen 
in California. He erupted in 1915. It's not that long ago. Using the, this chart is 1999, okay? Using radiometric dating, it gives you 110,000 years. Kilauea in Hawaii, it erupted in 1959. Using radiometric dating, it gives you 8.5 million years. Quite wrong. In Italy, Mount Stromboli erupted in 1963. But using radiometric dating, it gives you 2.4 million. Mount St. Helen, the one we talk about, it grew at dawn, okay? After it erupted, it uh, erupted small scale again. So there is a dawn inside the crater. Happened in 1986. When the chart was made, it was only 14 years. But using radiometric dating, it gives you 350,000 years. Now, I was there. I was there, okay, because I'm old enough. Okay, I saw the volcano erupt. I knew when this new dome grew out. I was there. Therefore, I can tell you for sure, 350 thousand years is not right. Why? Because I'm not that old. I know I'm not that old, right? Uh -huh. So it's only since 1986. And by the time the chart was made, it was only 14 years. This is history. Using radiometric method, it gives you a very wrong result. So the impression you should have is Radiometric method is useless. Let's see more. In 19, uh, 2019, so before the pandemic, we went to New Zealand, okay? And uh, because it was our June, very hot year, but it's the winter over there, okay? So we have to wear our big coat, okay? So after the conference, we went sightseeing. And then we see, ah, here is a big volcano. Volcano erupts all the time. It erupts many times. And so there are all kinds of, um, of uh, volcanic rock at different times. They recorded different times. 1949, 1950, 1997, right? 75, right? So you can collect them and use radiometric dating to see if it's correct, okay? So you see the volcanic rock here, okay? So the one that erupted in 1949, they collected two samples. So you know 1949, right? Even today, it's only what, 70 years, right? But using radiometric dating, it gives you 270,000 years. And the other sample, sample B, using radiometric dating, it gives you one million years, but actually it's only since 1949. Even up to today, it's only what, 72 years, right? Uh, now this one, they erupted in June 1954, not that long ago, not even 70 years. Using radiometric dating, sample A gives you 270 million, uh, 270,000 years. Sample E, B, gives you 1.5 million years, but only ever since 1950, so this must be wrong. Let's go for another one. This one is erupted in June 30, 1954. Not that long ago. Maybe your grandparents were already born, right? But using radiometric method, for five samples, it gives you 270,000 years, 1.3 million years, 3.5 million years, 800,000 years, 1.2 million years. That's not that long ago. Why come you give you, uh, they give you such a long ages? Because the method has a lot of assumption that we just talk about. Like when I am reading page 1000, 
You don't know if I start with zero. You don't know how fast I've been reading before you come in. You don't know if there were other factors that we blow this way and that way, right? So we assume that I start with page one, but maybe I did. I start from page 999. So I just got here, right? Okay. So for younger ones, you probably need your parents to, to go over with you, okay? But older kids will probably understand. Okay, look at these fossil trees that go through many layers. Why? Because the layers were not laid down slowly. They were laid down very fast. That's why you can bury the whole tree, you see? Many layers, they were laid down real fast. A good explanation is Noah's flood. See that? Uh, otherwise the trees will be very nice. They were standing there waiting for the mud to cover them up in millions of years and they don't rot very well-behaving trees, right? So you see, assumptions are wrong. The results will be wrong, okay? More trees that go through many layers, you see that? So the layers are laid out rather fast. If you go back to the Bible, Noah's flood is a very big thing. It can have mud this way and that way and cover it up very fast, right? So my question is, how old are these rocks? How old are these rocks? How old is this island? You'll probably say, how do I know? Uh -huh, you're smart now, okay? Actually, what happened was, in 1963, in November 1963, not long ago, there was an eruption from the bottom of the ocean. And pretty soon, you have new islands formed. 1963, you have new islands formed. And this is called Soot Sea Island. You can look it up. So sea island. So today when you see this island, how do you know it's only ever since 1963, it's only 50 years old. 50, 60 years old. Okay. How do you know it's only 60, not quite 60 years old? Because of history, you see. People saw it. So now you look at this island. How can I tell how old it is? if I don't know what happened, right? Now you know what happened. You can tell me, well, it's only since 1963, right? Now we go back to our old picture. How old are these things? So I don't know. How old are these things? So I don't know. How old is this mountain? So I don't know, <laughs> right? If we don't know the history, the answer is I don't know. But if we know the history, we know Susi Island formed in 1963. Then you say, oh, it's only since 1963, right? Uh -huh. So this kid is growing. She measures 150 centimeters now. When she was born, she measured 50 centimeters. So she has grown 100 centimeters, right? Okay, last year, she grew half a centimeter. How old is she? So for you who are very good in mathematics, yeah, okay, if she grew half a centimeter every year, then 100 year, 100 centimeter would take 200 years. Is she 200 years old? No, I can see you shaking your head, All right? Uh -huh. Because she grew half a centimeter doesn't mean that she had been growing half a centimeter all the time, right? Uh -huh. For example, uh, you four kids over there, uh, Wang Jia Le, Wang Jia An, and two more kids. Well, you measure how much you grow this year, okay? How tall would you be 
when you are 50 years, five old years old. When you're 50 years old, how old would you be if you grow this much every year? You'll be so tall to go through the city, but you know you don't have to worry about that because you're going to grow fast, but then you're going to slow down, right? So if we don't know the history, then we just say, I don't know. See that? Uh -huh. Okay, let's now go to another method. Another method is called index fossil. Index fossil, what is it? This is from Harvard University. Our number three kid went to Harvard University for her MD, PhD. So we went visit her and also went to the uh, Harvard Museum. So this picture is from Harvard Museum. It says fossils are geological stopwatch. He said, look at the fossil and you know how old they are. Is that sure? Is that sure? So here are called index fossils. These are called index fossils. Just like the one I show you. Tridobite is called index fossil because they call it 550 million years old. Then you're going to ask, how do you know, right? So at least you know some questions, okay? So this is called index fossil. There are many things that are called index fossil, okay? First of all, to qualify as an index fossil, an organism must have lived only during a short period of Earth history. You're going to ask a question. If I don't know the age, how do I know how long they live, right? So it's asking the question backwards. You see that? If I don't know how to count age, then how do I know this organism live only for a short time, right? So this method is actually a circular reasoning. See, every museum, this is the Cambridge, okay, separate museum. They will tell you, wow, 500 million years old and so on, so on, so on. What do, I what do they base on? They base on the circular reasoning, circular reasoning. So let me explain to this uh, in a simple way. So this is a dinosaur fossil. When you look for fossils, you look for the outside of the bone, okay? You see, the inside looks more like rock. It's difficult to tell. But the outside of the bone looks like that. So you can see, ah, that is a bone fossil. Okay. So we pick this up. There's a lot of dinosaur in Canada. Okay. So that was the time we can bring it home. They didn't, they didn't say no. So we had fossils. Okay. So if you ask me, how old is this dinosaur fossil? And I'm going to tell you, uh, this is 200 million years old. Then what question would you ask? How do you know? If you're smart. How do I know? Very yeah. smart. And I will going to tell you because the rock, the rock is very in. It's 200 million years old. And what question would you ask me? How do you know? How do you know the rock is 200 million years old? Uh -huh. And the answer would be, I am only a paleontologist. I only study old things. I don't study rocks. You go to as a geologist. So you go next door, Dr. Geology, how old is the rock? And he will look at it and say, 200 million years. And what would you ask him? How do you know? Very good. Huh? And then you know what he'll say? because it's got this kind of dinosaur fairy in it. And this kind of dinosaur is 200 million years old. And then you're gonna ask, how do you know that dinosaur is 200 million years old? And he said, not my view, I'm only a geologist. You have to go as a paleontologist. See? Now, first of all, you ask a paleontologist, how old is this? He said, where did you find it? I said, oh, I found it in this rock. So he said, oh, 200 million years old. He said, how do you know? He said, you go ask geologists. Because he's based on the age on the, on the rock, right? 
the rock is 200 million years old, so the animal is 200 years old. As when you ask them, how do you know the rock is 200 million? He, he said, go to ask the geologist. So I go ask the geologist. I said, how old is the rock? He gave me the same answer, 200 million years. So I asked, how do you know? And he said, because it's got this dinosaur inside. Yeah. And the dinosaur is 200 million years old. Then you're going to ask, how do you know the dinosaur is 200 million years old? And he said, you go ask the paleontologist. So you see the circular reasoning? I tell you, I am a queen. How do you know? My husband is a king. So you go ask my husband, are you a king? So of course I'm a king. He said, how do you know? Because my wife is a queen. You see that? This is called circular reasoning. You just go back and chase on your own tail, right? So this is called index fossil method. It's a circular reasoning. You have to first believe in evolution because at first of all, you assume evolution is true. And then say, oh, this thing, according to evolution, is in this stage of development, okay? Should be about 200 million years old. So you believe in evolution first, and then, then you say, okay, so the rock must be 200 million years old then. You said, if I don't believe in evolution, if you don't even know how old something is, how can you decide, right? So the whole thing is a circular reasoning. So this is something we need to know. I'm a queen, how do you know? Because my husband is the king. You are a king? How do you know? Yeah, because my wife is a queen. This is called circular reasoning. Okay. Uh -huh. So why? Because it started out in England. This place is called Sika Point. Okay. Sika Point is where modern geologists started. What is it? Sika Point is this is England, this is Scotland, okay? Sika Point is here. So you go visit England and uh, save a day or two to visit Scotland and go to Sika Point, okay? It's just uh, next to the ocean. So let's go there. It's not the museum or anything. It's just the land. So this uh, father and son went, went with us, okay? Now you have to go down this slope. <laughs> it's nothing refined. You just climb down the slope, okay? And then you go to the rock. That's my husband. So he's sitting and pointing to this line here, okay? So the strange thing about second point is the rocks are vertical and on top they're horizontal. Okay? The rocks, vertical, and on top they're horizontal. Why? Vertical and horizontal on top. Vertical, horizontal on top. You can go see for yourself, okay? So, how do you explain that? Vertical on bottom, horizontal on top. So, James Hutton, another British, he explained it this way. The vertical ones, they were deposited 425 million years ago. 425 million years ago. And you're going to say, how you know? Right. And in between this line, the red line, he says, either there's nothing deposited or it's an active erosion, nothing left. Because there's nothing. So either it, nothing deposited or it got eroded, okay? So his explanation. And then the horizontal one, he says, these sedimentary rocks originally deposited in a desert 345 million years ago. And you are going to ask them, how would you know? Is this an opinion or is it a fact from last time you remember? Yeah. Always ask, 
Is that fact or opinion? Is somebody's opinion or is this true? Of course, if it was 400 some million years, he wasn't there. How would he know? And here he says, either nothing deposit or it got eroded away. How did he know? And here it says deposited in the desert 345 million years ago. How did he know? Right. So these are opinions. So this is James Hutton. Okay. That's why he invented and said things are always the same. Okay. You can measure how fast deposits are. And it's the same thing previously. He didn't believe in the Bible. He didn't believe in the Noah's flood, the global flood. So he calls it uniformitarianism. The present is the key to the past. The present is the key to the past. Okay? But I just told you, the present may not be the key to the past. You ask your mom and dad, how much did you grow last year? They probably said nothing. And if you use that slow rate to see how old your parents are, they will be millions of years old also. You see that? And how about you? You grow about three inches this year. If you use that to project after next year and next year and next year, you will be so tall, you go through the ceiling, right? So anybody would know the present may not be the key to the past, okay? So another person, Charles R.L., he says, oh, that's good. I don't have to believe the Bible. So he says he's freeing signs from Moses. He doesn't want to believe the Bible. The Bible only gives us thousands of years. So he said, wow, if it's the millions of years, we don't have to believe in the Bible. So he chose not to believe. And he wrote the call Principles of Geology. You know, you all know Charles Darwin. When he went on his boat, he brought this book, Principles of Geology, on boat. And he believed that the millions of years were real. So he said, if it's so long, then maybe things have time to change from a single cell into a human being. So is that true? Of course not, right? That's his opinion. We have never seen anything like that. For example, here is a silicon. Evolution says, look at the fin. It's going to grow into a, a foot. It's going to come on, on land. So evolution says it started in the water and then it climbed on it. So it's a silicon. It's probably the animal that went from sea to land. Oh, so it's 70 million years old and it went extinct. It went extinct. Ha ha. In 1938, people found a real living silicon still alive. Did it go extinct? Of course not. In England, they found this one in 1960. Did it go extinct? Of course not. In Beijing, they found this one in 1976. Did it go extinct? Of course not. So they call these things living fossil. Because the evolution says it should die off 70 million years ago, but it's alive. Ah, so it's a living fossil. So when you hear living fossil, what does that tell you? Evolution is wrong again. You see. So did it go extinct 70 million years ago? No, not only that. In 2003, December 05, somebody took a video camera, went down to the ocean, and took video of hundreds of silicon. They're still alive very well, swimming, but they're deep sea animals. So we usually don't see it because they live down deeper in the ocean. They're not extinct. They're not living fossil. They're just creatures, right? Uh -huh. So you see, when people say they're extinct, they may not, may not be extinct. Okay? Ah, in Indonesia, you can eat them. They sell them in the market. So 
people thought they were extinct 65 million years ago, together with dinosaurs. Is that true? Of course not. Right. So is dinosaur extinct? I don't know. Maybe somebody will find a living one, just like this one. People didn't find it for a long time, but the first one was found in 1938, right? Less than a hundred years ago. So we don't know. Indonesia, you can eat them, okay? It's a big fish, okay. Uh -huh. So when I was in New Zealand, I was just out buying something. On my way back, I saw this thing. Layers and layers and layers of rock. Ben, see that Ben, Ben, Ben. But the interesting thing is they are Ben, but they are not broken. Isn't it interesting? If you buy a loaf of bread that are sliced, when the bread is fresh, you bend it, it will not break. Try it, okay? But if you leave for, for a few days, the bread will be dry, will be hard. Then if you bend it, it will crack. If you don't believe me, try it, okay? Buy new bread, but it's still soft. You can bend it, it will break. And you just leave it there for a few days, it will dry out. Then you bend it, it's going to crack, right? So when these layers bend and not crack, what happened? Maybe they were not hard. Maybe they were too soft. You see? So when you're driving, when your dad and mom is driving, uh, they, you, they are driving, they can look, okay? They have to be careful about driving. But you can look. A lot of the places where you're driving uh, on the freeway, they cut through mountains. You can see layers and layers, layers of rock. And see if you can find a place where it bends, but it doesn't crack. Okay, I'm pretty sure you can find it in many places, okay? So that tells me that the layers will form rather fast. They will bend before they will dry. Ah, so it doesn't take long. It's not like evolution says one layer takes so many hundreds of years, another layer. It will all dry out, but no. No, it's flat. Everything happens fast and it's still soft. Then there's an earthquake or something, push it up so it bends, but it doesn't crack. Is that interesting? Right. More bend, even more. You see the rock? And here, wow, even turn around like that. Okay. And here, you yeah, go to museum. It's an evidence interpretation. Evidence is what you really see. Interpretation is the explanation. When you go to a museum, you see the real thing, and then you read the interpretation, ask yourself, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Then you'll be smart, okay? Remember, the most important thing is not to remember information, because today, all you need is, a, is your uh, cell phone, and you can Google and look for any information, right? But the important thing is ask questions. Ask questions. But for people that like to do science, when you are doing research, the most important thing is ask questions. If you know how to ask questions, that's why I welcome your questions. You see, smart people will ask smart questions, but all questions are good questions. Okay, so we still have time, so you can ask questions. Okay, so for example. The observations are used to make inter interpretations that enable us to build up a picture of what the world was like in the geological past. You see, we look at the real thing and then we think maybe this is why. Maybe because the weather was different, maybe because of the sea, maybe because of those are interpretations. Right. Okay. Go to Arizona. This place is called the waves waves. It looks like waves, right? Look at all these, those layers all bent, all bent. You have to hike in, though. You can see it from the road, so you have to hike in. For you young people, you can walk, okay? Hike in there. Look it up. It's called the waves. And then plan your trip to go there, okay? 
So Anna, remember, you're only seven years old, right? Uh -huh. But you live in New York. So this is in the West Coast, Arizona. So next time, if you have a longer vacation time, ask your parents to take you there, Grand Canyon, all those places, okay? So you see these waves. What is your interpretation? Some people say, well, it takes millions and millions of years to form this layer. But you're going to say, doesn't look like it. It probably takes very little time so that when the layers are bent, they were still soft. So maybe Noah's flood. See, the, the waves are this way, that way, and accumulate layers very fast. So different opinion, right? See that? The waves. You look at the things, and what is your explanation? Okay. So here we have things. Explanation, according to evolution, is it takes a long time to evolve. Is that true? Is that true? Let's look at some of these names. Cretaceous. Cretaceous. Is that a time? No, it's a place. It's those white cliffs in England. Ah, because these white cliffs are chalk. And chalk, the word for chalk is crater. Because of Cretaceous. Jurassic. Is that time? No, it's a place. Jurassic, Jera Mountain, is between France and Switzerland. If you find fossils in that area, you can call it Jurassic, that's all. Triassic, is it time? No, it's a place. It's a three-fold character, rock in Europe. So you find fossils there, you just call it Triassic, see? Permian, it's a time? No, it's a place. It's a place in the old USSR. Pennsylvania, it's a time? No, you all know that. It's in Pennsylvania. If you find fossils in Pennsylvania, you call it Pennsylvania, right? The same thing, Devonia, that is a place in England, a Mississippian, right? You all know that, right? That is not a time, it's a place. When you find fossils in Mississippi, you just call it Mississippi. So the time was not there. People put it there, okay? For example, Cambrian. Oh, that's supposed to be, supposed to be 500, 500 million years old. Okay, 500 million years old. That is not right because Cambria is a place name. It's the Roman name for Wales. So when you found some fossil in Wales, you know where Wales is? It's uh, west of England, okay? Because the old name is called Cambria. So it's not time, it's a place. Ah, so evolution wants us to know that it's a time. No, it's not time, it's a place, okay? Now, well, if you are still there, exhausted, we'll take you to China, okay? So this is called Chengjiang, Chengjiang fauna, Chengjiang Dongwu Qun. Okay. Why is it so important? Because there's a place in China called Chengjiang that they have a lot of fossils. So let's go see it. Ah, go to the real place, fossil site, the Chengjiang fauna, right? Chengjiang Dongwu Qun. I took the picture, okay, to show you. So what are these fossils? Oh, in the museum, they show you that, ah, reconstructed, it looks like a big, big wheel. Okay, so you call it 大人盘, I don't know what that means, okay? Ah. So this thing, it looks like an ear, so it's called 耳形等次床, an ear shape, uh, some kind of worm. Okay? And they also find, oh, this kind of animal, all kinds of strange things, right? So they call this names. That's a fossil. This is the model from the fossil. Okay? Wow, what an interesting animal, right? Uh -huh. So they found all kinds of things. Of course, they also found trilobites. As I told you, 
trial bike is an index muscle. Anywhere you find a trial bike, why is it called trial bike? Three lobes, three lobes. I have a big one, okay? I have a big one, a big trial bike. You see that? Three lobes, one, two, three, with beautiful eyes. This one is a bigger one than the smaller one, right? You see the difference? Uh -huh. Bigger one, more expensive. Small one, less expensive. That's the difference, okay? So trilobite. bite, if you find trilobite, bite, evolution said that fixed the rock, the rock layer. Remember what we talked about in this puzzle? The rock layer will be 550 or 520 million years old. But now you know that the answer is, I don't know, okay? So we go to Chen Jiang. What happened is they not only find trilobite, they found a lot of other things all in the same layer. That means they're all 500 some million years old. In the museum, it says it provides direct evidence for the roots of animal diversity. Why is the root? Because they found all kinds of animals already. Not like evolution that says, start with single cell and then become two cells and then multiple cells and then eventually become human beings. No, they found everything. So here are the phylum. All phylums, all phylums were found there already. Okay, so this one, the different phylum. These are phylum, phylum, phylum. So if you study biology, kingdom, phylum, right? You have kingdom first, and then you divide them into phylum. So there are about 20 some phylum. In Chengjiang, they found almost all the known phylum. And if they were all together, then there's no evolution then, because they were there already. So evolution has a big question. This is called Cambrian explosion. Okay, you can ask more questions. You can also go to Canada. There's a place in Yoho National Park. It's called Burgess Shell. Burgess Shell, there's also a site that you find trilobite and a lot of other things. It's also called Cambrian explosion. In other words, how come all kinds of things all appear already? It did go slowly and evolve. They all appear at the same time. There's another place in Australia and another place that I, I had been to. It's called Qingjiang in China. I haven't been there yet. I've gone to the Yoho uh, Shell. I've gone to the Chengjiang, but I have not gone to the Australian one. I have not gone to the Qingjiang. If I have a chance, I'll go there too. Okay? So look for it yourself. Now we used to, the museum used to tell you that fossils form very slowly. They change the idea now. They say it has to be very fast. Okay? So if you go to England Museum, it used to say, Fossils form very slowly. You have a you have a fish that died and it died and sank down and then got covered up slowly. And after many, many thousands of years, it formed fossil. In museum in London, it doesn't say that anymore. They said the fish has to be covered up real fast. And then it takes millions of years to become fossil, actually, to become fossil, you need to cover it up real fast. And it might form very fast to become rock. Why do we have to cover it up very fast? Because you just try it. You get a fish, you bury it in, the, in your backyard, and you come back a couple of weeks later and dig it up. What do you see? you probably see a stinky, rotten fish, right? It won't give you such a beautiful, the scales are still there. You see the scale is still there, right? It'll be rotten out. So it needs to be covered up real fast. And then it needs a lot of sediment, the water laid down uh, mud. Why? Otherwise, two things, you'll be eaten by other animals or you'll be rotten by bacteria. So if it's covered up real fast and heavy, 
the pressure will press down the oxygen. So the bacteria would not even be able to decay. It. Right. Okay. So at least the museum are changing one part. But it has to be very fast. Okay. So now you know the score geologic column is not really a geological column. It's probably where these things live. If we have more time, I'll give you more of these things, okay? So things that live under the ocean, they got very ferns, of course, when there's volcanic eruption. Things that live by the water, they'll probably bury before the things that live on land, right? It's where they live. If there's a global flood, of course, the things that out there will be buried first, and the things that live higher will be buried last, right? So this is a hypothesis, not a real thing, okay? So it's a guess. Evolution says it takes millions and millions of years for it to evolve, but it's not fact, okay? Uh, do we have time for a couple 14? I'll go fast. If you don't understand, then we'll try to explain them. Carbon-14 is what everybody was mistaken. As I asked that when I bought the fossil, I asked what method did you use? The owner of the source says carbon-14, but they say it was 500 million years. I didn't say anything to him, of course, but he was wrong because carbon-14 cannot give you millions of years. Carbon-14 cannot even give you 100,000 years. Why? We'll see. Okay, this is what I have. 500 years, right? Uh -huh. And the owner says using carbon-14. Of course not. Why not? Because carbon-14 cannot give you that long. Okay. Carbon-14 is a kind of carbon atom. Usually, the ordinary carbon like wood and bone, most of it is carbon-12. But a very little, very small amount is carbon-14. It was formed by cosmic ray, the radiation hitting neutron. And then, so they hit nitrogen 14 and push out a proton. Then you get carbon 14. So carbon 14 would combine with oxygen and carbon dioxide. So the tree, they would absorb carbon dioxide. And the animals will eat the tree so the animal would also eat carbon-14 and carbon-12 together, right? Because the carbon dioxide had both carbon-12 and carbon-14. Okay. When the animal dies, its bones will contain the same amount of carbon-14 ratio to carbon-12. But when the bones were there longer, carbon-14 is reactive. You it'll, it'll turn back to nitrogen. So you get less and less carbon-14, okay? So now if we measure how much carbon-14, you can calculate how old, how long ago the animal died, okay? But then the important thing today is for you to know that carbon-14 cannot give you a million years, okay? So the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 is one to one followed by 12 zero. Very little carbon 14, you see that? Uh, in one followed by 12 zero carbon 12, you have one carbon 14, very little, okay? So as we talk about radioactive, after a long time, you have nothing left. After how long? So carbon 14 has a half-life of 5,730 5, years today, okay? So if you start with, this much, 1,000 carbon-14. In 5,000 some years, you will have only one half left. In 5,000 some years, you have only one half, which is 1,000 half of 1,000 is 500, right? Uh-huh. So in another 5,000 some years, you have half of this left, 250 left. And in another 5,000 some years, you have half of this left, okay? So you see, 5,000 years, 10,000 years, 
15,000 years and another 5,000 years, you will have only 62 left. If you another 5,000 years, you have 31 left. Another 5,000 years, only 15 left. Another 5,000 years, only 8 left. Another 5,000 years, you have 4 left. Another 5,000 years, you have 2 left. Another 5,000 years, you have 1 left. So you see, how long does it take to have only 1 left? 10 times 5,000 years, only 57,000 years. Now, if you have less than one, you can't count, right? You can't even detect. So, carbon 14 method would not give you a million years. It cannot. This method cannot give you a million years because of a short half life. Okay? So, all you need to know today is that because carbon 14 doesn't last. So, in a less than 100,000 years, it'll be all gone. So it cannot give you million years, okay? How about three rings? Three rings, okay? If you have a tree in the backyard, it got chopped down, you can count how many rings, right? Usually, we call it ear ring, but it's not necessarily ear. It reflects whether it grows fast or grows slow. During the summer, it has a lot of water, it grows faster. So the color will be lighter because it grows faster, right? During winter, it grows slower, the color will be darker. It's something like if you go outside in the sun, okay? So if you go outside in the sun and you, you got suntan and you go back, if you bend your hand, you see the place that you bend will be a lot darker than the rest of your body, right? So you see, uh-huh. So if it grows faster, it'll be lighter. If it grows slower, it'll be darker, right? So it's a ring, but not eerie. Yeah. It may not be eerie. It's seasonal. The, when it grows fast, it'll be lighter. Okay. So how, how, how many rings do we have in the oldest tree? Let's go to Nevada and California in the high mountains. These trees are called bristle cone pine. They're very old. They're very old. Oh, I, before that, I have to talk to you about this, okay? So these are what the evolution says. If a carbon-14 date supports our theories, we put it in the main text. If it does not entirely contradict them, we put it in a footnote. And if it's completely out of date, we just drop it. Is that objective? See, they already made up their mind. The dinosaurs are 100, 200 million years old. So when people say, huh, we date them become 14 and get 22,000 to 39,000 years for, for dinosaur, they just drop it because it doesn't agree with, the, uh, with their theory. The abstract was removed from the conference website by two chairmen because they could not accept the findings. And willing to challenge the data opening, they erased the report from public view without a word to the author. Ha, huh. that happened in a meeting in Singapore. So you see, when you read journal, they are not reporting everything. They keep their theory. If your result doesn't agree with their theory, they just drop it. You see? Okay, I have to a little bit hurry. Okay. So I can't explain that much. I have to uh, end and, uh, and uh, help you to, um, to ask questions, okay? Let me see, 414. Okay, so the important thing we learned today is their opinions, they not, may not be fair. For example, you buy this car and the factory says, use electricity. You buy that car and the factory says, use diesel. Well, who decides what is right and what's wrong for the car? Of course, the factory, right? Uh -huh. And then if you buy a car, 
you decide whether you want to listen to the factory. Say, well, the factory says use electricity, but I don't want to. Well, what will happen to your car? You will suffer the consequence, right? So today, what is right and what is wrong is decided by the designer, the creator. We, we can decide whether we want to follow or not. And then we suffer the consequence if we don't follow. So again, what is good and what is bad? You remember the Garden of Eden? God told Adam not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Adam, you did not make everything. You don't know what is good and what is bad. Just listen. But Adam and Eve did not want to listen. They did not want to listen to the creator. Therefore, they have to suffer the consequence. That's why we die today. Okay? Your car, if you are smart, you listen to the factory. If you don't, you suffer the consequence. So the same thing. The Bible tells us we have the creator. He sets our rules. He's going to judge us. A good thing you also have the Redeemer, Jesus Christ. So your decision today is whether to listen to the devil or not, okay? The devil says, do your own thing. Don't listen to him because I did not make heaven and earth. So if I don't listen to God and listen to myself, my life would not be ideal, which the Bible calls sin. And the result of sin is death, right? What happened? What should we do? Only God himself, Jesus, came down and died for us. Then he rose again. So if we believe in Jesus, we would also conquer death. That is the good news. Because God loves you. Have you established a loving relationship with God? That's why believe in Jesus. It's a relationship like you and your parents. A loving relationship. So if you have, you can ask Jesus. Okay? What you say is, Heavenly Father, I praise you. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you. For you are the true creator. And you've come down to earth to become men. To tell me that you love me. You shed your precious blood to get rid of my guilt, my imperfection. You rose again from the dead to give me a new life. I want you, dear Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Take control of my life. You are my boss. Forgive my sin. What sin? The sin of not trusting you, doing things my own way. Now I want to follow you. Please give me eternal life. That is your life. Grant me the Holy Spirit to guide my ways and protect me. And let your wonderful plan be fulfilled in my life. Let me experience your love, peace, and joy. Bless my family that we all trust in you and be filled with your love. This I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you talk to Jesus, I want you to be my savior and my boss. Forgive my sin. He will. And he will also bless you. Okay, shall we bow for a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. Although we are kind of rushed, but please help us to have an impression. But we don't know how old the fossils are. Because the only way to know how old something is, is with history, with somebody that was there to see it. Help us to think it over and also ask questions. Help us to know Jesus loves us, and we also want to love Jesus. 
This I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, now you may write your questions. And if we have time, we can also uh, answer some questions. Okay. <laughs> 